Great. Well, it's fun to be here. Um, my name is Dawn Barlow, and I'm a PhD candidate at Oregon State University. Um, I'm in the Marine Mammal Institute here at Hatfield Marine Science Center, um, and I'm part of the Geospatial Ecology of Marine Megafauna Lab. And um, my, I'm not here as an artist, I'm here as a researcher. Um, and my research is primarily focused on the distribution and ecology of marine mammals. So in other words, in trying, I'm interested in questions like what drives where we see whales, where do we see whales and what leads to that in terms of their prey and the ocean conditions and how does their distribution overlap with things like threats from human activity. And what I'm going to share with you today is a very um, kind of surface level overview with some photos and some imagery of um, whales here in Oregon waters. And um, all of the photos and information I'm sharing, you, sharing with you today is in large part thanks to this wonderful lab that I'm part of and the, many of the collaborators listed here. Um, so to be honest, a lot of my work is spent at a computer doing analysis, but one of the best parts of my work is that I get to spend time at sea scanning the water for marine mammals in various places, including offshore Oregon waters, which has been some of the, the best times I've spent at sea. Um, and like I said, my reason for looking for where they are is to understand why they're there and what their interaction with threats are. But when you spend time on the water looking at these animals, you also gain a great appreciation for their beauty, which is why I think those of you that are here to paint and draw are here, because these are some spectacular animals. So gray whales um, are, are one of the main species of whales that we see right here in our backyards. They're part of this greater Eastern North Pacific population of gray whales that has made a pretty tremendous recovery from um, depletion from whaling. And they make this, they make this annual migration from the breeding grounds in Baja California, Mexico, up to feeding grounds in the, um, in, around the Arctic, where they feed on these benthic um, quitters. But then there's a smaller group of these animals that don't make the full migration. And they feed in the shallow near shore waters, um, including off of coastal Oregon. And that's this Pacific Coast feeding group. And these are our neighborhood whales. You can see here a boat and our Oregon coastline here. And many of you have probably seen these animals right from shore. And we can recognize these individual whales by their distinct markings. And on gray whales, they have these, these modeling patterns um, that we can use to identify individuals. They also, you can see they have, they, they don't have a really pronounced dorsal fin, but they have these, we call them knuckles. And each of these things um, is, are kind of characteristic features of gray whales, but they're also characteristic features that we can tell them apart from one individual to another. And that means that we really get to know these individuals as they come back year after year. And so we can track things like new births in the population and really learn about these whales that are in our backyard over a course of many years. And they feed right in coastal waters. So here is some drone imagery captured by Todd Chandler. And this is a gray whale feeding um, on, in, a, in a kelpie habitat. I believe this is right off of, oh, we paused. I believe this is right off of um, Otter Rock. And you can see these gray whales are so incredibly flexible and bendy, which maybe you can keep that in mind in your painting. <laughs> they, are, um, they make these incredible maneuvers right around the rocks and in the kelp, and they're feeding on these um, mycid shrimp in these kelp beds predominantly. All right, then we have blue whales. Blue whales are the largest whale, in fact, the largest animal and the largest animal ever. They can reach these massive lengths and they can, there are even reports of larger, larger whales over, larger blue whales over 100 feet from the Antarctic. Um, they are another cosmopolitan species. They're distributed um, around the world, but they have distinct subspecies and populations. We do have a population that feeds off of the US West Coast here of about 2,000 individuals. And these, they're the largest animal ever, but they have a really specialized diet on one of the smallest animals, these energy-rich krill that are found 
in our coastal waters here. And they're called blue whales, but in reality, they have this kind of gray mottled pigmentation that is distinct to them. It's this light gray color, but they're the blue in their, um, in their name comes from actually this effect that when they're slightly submerged underwater, they glow blue, which I think is one of the most beautiful colors in my opinion. And you can kind of see that here in this photo captured from an aerial survey um, off of the south coast of Oregon. And you can see from this map, this was again compiled data and big shout out to our postdoc Solène Derville for this compilation of this, these sightings data. But you can see they're not in the same high density as the humpbacks are off our coast, but they do occur in our Oregon coastal waters. Here you can see the dunes of Florence in the background of this blue whale sighting here. And again, you can see this mottled light gray pigmentation. And this whale actually has some diatoms, some algae growing on it, which they often get in these chilly coastal waters up here. I want to thank the many lab mates and collaborators that um, contributed photos and information to this. Um, and if you wanna learn more about the research conducted in our lab, feel free to um, find the website or subscribe to our blog that comes out every week and feel free to contact me or ask me questions during the workshop. And, and welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Um, my name is Lacey and I am an OSU graduate from the art department and I also minored in psychology. Be pretty abstract. Okay. This is the watercolor set I'm working with. Pastel colors, light and pigment. And I'm starting with my lightest blue. If you have a different set, you could start with just water, or you could start with mixing some blue and white, or whatever colors you want. It could be completely abstract and unique. So I'm going to start with the body of the whale, just so I have an idea of how much space I'm going to need. There you go. Okay. And I'm going to go up a little bit, curve, 